and welcome to lesson 15.1 in the Atlas tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at object level methods and inheritance. Now these are some important concepts not only for Atlas but for all programming languages in general. Now thus far we've looked at world level methods and some ways to further organize your programs and make them a little bit cleaner. But uh, object level methods are really unique in the fact that you can make some cool animations for objects and then use them in other Alice worlds. One of the problems that a lot of people run into when programming in Alice is, let's say you take the time to take a human object and really animate a good walking animation for that object. That's all well and good, but then when you go to create a new world, you have to do that over and over and over again. And so the question is, is there a way to program detailed animations into an object and then use that object in all of your different Alice worlds? And the answer is yes. So that's what a class level method or an object level method allows us to do. And later that will translate into some of the other programming languages where you'll create classes, say in, in Python, in my Python tutorial series or other programming languages like Java or Ruby and be able to create certain classes that inherit properties of others. So that's what we're working on today. Lesson 15.1 is creating detailed animations that can be used in all of your Alice worlds. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in our new Alice world. And before we get started, let's add a couple objects that we can use to demonstrate some of our object and class level methods. So click on add objects. And the first object I'm gonna pull out is from the environments gallery. So from the environments gallery, I want this frozen lake. So drag this so that it kind of takes up a majority of the screen. And since we have a frozen lake, I'm gonna to want to add an ice skater as well. And you can find the ice skater in the people gallery. So if you scroll over to people, and I think this is the ice skater that I'm looking for. So let's uh, drag the ice skater out here. Now her feet are kind of going through the ice right now. So I'm just going to raise the elevation a little bit and position her arms so that she is kind of in a better standing position. So let's, there's that side and let's get the other. Grab the other arm and put that down at her side. And let's see how that looks. Fantastic. So I have an ice skater and I've got the ice skater out on the frozen lake. And this is going to be the object that we use for uh, creating our first class level method. The big difference between a class level method and a world level method is typically the world level method. So when we click on world and then create new method, um, that's in the past something we've used when multiple objects are going to be uh, interacting with one another, or it's going to be a method that's specific to the Alice world that we're working on. For the ice skater, I want to create a method that is object specific and not world specific. In other words, I want to create some movements and some some things that this ice skater can do completely independent of whether she's in this world or in another world that I create. And I suppose the first thing that I would want my ice skater to be able to do is learn how to ice skate. So let's start by animating our ice skater so that she can ice skate realistically. Let's start by animating our ice skater to simply slide along her left skater, create an animation that looks, looks like she's pushing off and sliding um, with the left skate. Instead of creating a new method here in my world, I'm going to make sure that I have the ice skater selected and create a new method here. And this is going to be called slide left. And the, now I can see the name of this method is ice skater one dot slide left and not world dot slide left. This lets me know that this method is specific to ice skater one. Now what I would like to do is put together some code that kind of makes this ice skater look like she's pushing off. Uh, everything short of the move command is what I'm going to be doing. So I imagine that when she pushes off, the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to have her upper body. So take her upper body and let's have her upper body turn forward by, let's try 0.1 revolution. So other 0.1 revolution. And for every action, I want her to return to the standing position. So we are going to end up putting this in a do together loop. So she'll kind of lean forward. She's going to wait for half a second. And then finally, we'll have a do together 
where we duplicate her leaning forward and just have her do the opposite so she ends up in the exact same spot that she was. So if I hit play now, whoops, forgot to uh, call this event. So before we do that, let's go to my first method and tell Alice that we want to run slide left just as a means to test this line of code. So hit play and we can see she kind of leans forward and then leans back. So that's a good start for what I'm looking for. The next thing that I want to happen is I kind of want her right leg to be raised up in the air. So let's go to her right leg and have the right leg turn forward by that same 0.1 revolutions. And just like I did last time, because we're turning it forward the first time, whoops, we'll have it turn backwards by 0.1 revolutions on the way back. So hit play here and see what this looks like. Okay, we're starting to get there a little bit. She's supposedly going to be sliding on this left ice skate. Well, the thing I don't like about this animation right now is her head is tilting towards the ground. So let's specifically take her head. So upper body, then select chest, neck, and head. And we want her head to turn backwards. So that way her body leans forward, but her head will kind of tilt back so she's still looking forward. So take the head and turn it backwards by that same 0.1 revolutions. And of course, to put her back, we'll simply make a copy of that line of code, move it to our reset do together statement, and have that turn forward. So hit play and see what this is looking like. That's pretty decent so far. Um, her arms aren't really looking realistic, so we'll address that. Um, another thing that I'm going to want to do, because this line is starting to get a little bit complicated, is throw a comment line in here. It says, uh, ice skater skates along her left skate. And throw a comment in this second do together that says this resets the ice skater back to a standing position. And that will just help me keep straight what's going on for later if this, comp if this code gets a little too complicated. At any rate though, I want to uh, handle her left arm and her right arm. So in her upper body, you should have access to right shoulder and left shoulder. And I'm gonna have her left shoulder turn backwards. And I think I'm going to go with about 0.25 revolutions on this. So let's see what that looks like. So 0.25, I guess I could have just used one fourth. Um, her left shoulder is turning backwards, 0.25 revolutions. And then, of course, I'll make a copy, put it in my reset, and do the opposite action. So this will be turn forward, 0.25 revolutions. And let's see what her arm looks like. Fantastic. That looks like a pretty good anima animation thus far. The only thing that's left to deal with is her right shoulder. And I'll select her right shoulder from my objects panel. And we're going to have the right shoulder turn forward. So it's going the opposite direction as the first. And I'm going to have it go 0.2 revolutions. And of course, we'll reset that here. So make a copy of that line. We're going to drag this down here and have it turn backwards so she should return to her normal standing position. Hit play to see what this looks like. And although she's not moving, that's about the animation I want for her kicking off and skating along her left skate. So that looks pretty good right there. And now I have a, an ice skater object level method called slide left. The next thing that I'm going to want to do is create a slide right. Now slide left and slide right are going to be very similar, so you don't need to see that uh, over. Pretty much what we're going to do is take this exact line of code and just do the opposite of everything. So instead of the right leg, we'll have the left leg. Instead of the left shoulder, it'll be right shoulder. So that's what we'll be doing in this next section right here. And obviously, I, you know what you're doing if you were able to create this. So we'll speed this up and get our slide right method written correctly.
So there we go, we programmed slide right. You can see the only change that I made was in looking at the animation, I determined that uh, the arm turning point two revolutions here was a little bit too much for me. So I ended up changing the arm that's moving back uh, forwards in each animation to point one revolutions instead of point two revolutions. So I think that ends up looking a little bit better. And of course, when I hit play, you can see um, I, I moved the ice skater a little bit off camera, but that's what we're looking at as far as an animation goes. So she's not moving, but I'm going to make another class level method to address this. I'm going to create a new method here, and I'm going to call this skate. So this is the method I'm going to call when I want my ice skater to actually skate. Now, each one of these animations, slide left and slide right, each takes approximately 2.5 seconds. And I know this because this do together block is animated for one second. The reset is animated for one second. And I have a half second wait in the middle. So that means each of these is taking 2.5 seconds. So if the ice skater slides left and slides right, we're going to have a five second animation. So in my ice skater skate method, I'm going to have a do together loop in which I move the ice skater forward. So select your ice skater, move forward. And for right now, let's just try a distance of maybe, uh, let's try two meters and see how that looks. And I'm going to have to adjust the duration to match the animation. And since we just talked about this, I know my duration is going to be five seconds. Now, while this is going on, um, before I add those things to, before I add slide right and slide left to my skate method, let's go to my first method. Let's delete our calls to ice skater slide left and slide right and simply put skate into my first method. Now skate right now is going to have our ice skater moving forward two meters. So hit play. And we can see about how far our ice skater is going to move. Well, that looks pretty good right there. Now in a do and order statement, we'll have her take off on her left skate and then skate on her right skate. So she'll be sliding left, coming to a, to a standing position, sliding right, coming to a standing position, all while moving forward two meters over five seconds. So our animation will end up looking like this. And possibly might be a little bit too slow, so maybe I want to take the uh, meters or the distance and go with three meters instead of two and let's see if that looks a little bit better. You know, I do like that a little bit better. So that's how skate is going to look when we're done with it. Now what we've got here is we have our uh, two slide left and slide right which are going to be called by skate while the ice skater is moving forward. Now whenever I want my ice skater to move forward I simply need to tell her to skate instead of programming all the legs and arms and, and movements such as that. Now I'm definitely not done with my ice skater yet. Uh, we'll be doing a little bit more with the ice skater in the next couple of lessons, but this is a good time to talk about object uh, or code reuse and exporting our classes. Because now we've created a skater that knows how to skate. When we originally imported this object, ice skater one, ice skater one didn't know how to ice skate. We have now created slide left, slide right, and skate, which created a somewhat realistic skating animation for our ice skater. The trouble is, if I go to a new Alice world and import ice skater one, I don't want to have to recreate all this code. And there is definitely a way to do this. The first thing that you're going to want to do, and this is a very important step, is to rename your object to something else. If I leave this named ice skater one, it might create some problems later because my new ice skater will have the same name as the old ice skater. So the first thing you'll want to do before you export an object is give it a new name. And so I'm going to rename my ice skater skating skater or you know something that just describes our uh, object. So skating skater is the name of my object. It's no longer ice skater. And with a different name, I'm ready to export it. To do this, simply right click on your object, click on save object, and now save this object somewhere else. So I'm going to create a new folder in my Alice directory, 
called new objects. And in new objects, I'm going to save, save skating skater dot a2c and that stands for Alice 2.0 or Alice version 2 class. So now skating skater is going to be saved in my new objects folder. And right now it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot going on. But watch this. When I go to create a new world, um, I'll save this so we can come back to her later. So let's go ahead and save this to the Alice world right now. So I'm going to call this lesson 15.1. I'm going to create a new world and I'm going to make it a snow world and maybe just change the background color so it's dark out. And so I have this new world. Well, if I simply go in to add a new object and add a new ice skater, if I want my ice skater to skate, you can see there are no methods for this ice skater. Essentially, she can't do anything that the other ice skater was in it, was that we taught the other ice skater to do. However, if I go to File, Import, and then select my Skating Skater from my New Objects Gallery, see I get a new object. Now it looks identical, but all the properties that I had from the first world are now there. You can even see it, it took her position in the world. She's raised off the ground a little bit too much, so I'll bring her down. You can see that her arm position was saved where it was when I exported the object, so she's already in a good standing position. Her name is Skating Skater, and of course when I select this object, Skate, Slide Left, and Slide Right are there. So now, after I import this new skater, if I want her to skate, I simply drag Skate to my first method, hit Play, and my skater in this new world has inherited all of the animations that I taught her in that first world. Exporting your objects is a really important technique because as you write bigger programs and as you write more interesting things, you're going to want to spend some time to make it more realistic and have detailed animations. And having to reprogram everything from scratch every time you create a new world gets to be a big pain. If you export the objects after you're done, after you've added these important class level uh, methods, you'll be able to use more sophisticated objects that you've created yourself in your other Alice worlds. So now that we've taken a look at the basics of exporting objects, let's go ahead and take a look at the Lesson 15.1 Challenge Program. So the Lesson 15.1 Challenge Program is really quite simple. I think it's something that you'll be able to do very quickly, and that's simply to make a Tyrannosaurus Rex that has a roar method. So you can see I've created one here. We simply have the T-Rex look at the camera and roar. If you do that as a class level method, instead of just programming it directly into my first method, you'll have a T-Rex that will have a roar command that you can use in multiple worlds. So your job is to create a T-Rex that can roar, or you might want to make a walking animation for your T-Rex, or you know, think of the different things that you can do to make the T-Rex a more usable object, create those class level methods, and then export that T-Rex to use them in another world. So it's really, really hard to give you an example of how to do that, uh, simply because I don't have multiple worlds available. But this is your goal. You want to create some methods for the T-Rex that can be used later. Now, one of the things that we haven't covered yet is how to import sound. You can play around with it, but a future video will address how to import sounds that can export along with your objects. So your goal, write a realistic T-Rex roaring animation and then export your T-Rex to another world, import it, and see if you can make those animations carry over. If you can do that, you're in good shape, and we will look forward to lesson 15.2. Now, as always, if you have any questions, if something isn't working for you, I would be happy to help you out. So just leave those questions in the comments, and uh, we'll do our best to make sure that you get a working world. Thank you so much for watching and your support of the Alice tutorial series. Uh, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.